All right, so where we left off yesterday, we were working on the read words method. The read words method takes one parameter, which is the name of the file, to read all the words from, and it returns a reference to a set containing all of those words. And we talked through how, um, in this case, we don't care about the order in which we iterate the words, so a hash set would be the preferred class to use because it will be the faster one. Um, we also talked about best practices, which we never had to worry about in APCSA, which is, yes, we're creating a new hash set class. However, um, we'll assign it to a variable of type set, the interface that hash set implements, so that we have the flexibility in the future to change to a different concrete class here and not have to change a bunch of code elsewhere. The only place the word hash set will show up in this entire program is right here. Everywhere else we'll use the more generic set interface. We created a new scanner like we're familiar with from um, reading from the terminal. Uh, but in this case, we're reading from a file. So the first parameter is a file object and we have to specify how that file is encoded. There's several different types of file encoding. Um, and we only wanna read words. We don't care about numbers and punctuation. So we're gonna change the definition of the delimiter you may remember that the delimiter is the term we use for the set of characters that separate words or tokens more specifically. Um, so we're just about ready to actually read from the file. So let's do that. Um, this may look familiar. We're gonna write a while loop. We're gonna say while in dot has next. So we're used to this structure with our new iterators, but this is also the same structure we used last year um, when reading from the terminal. All right, here's what it's gonna look like. Words is our uh, variable that refers to the set. We're gonna use the add method. And what are we gonna add? Well, we're gonna read the next thing in the scanner stream, but we're gonna convert it to lowercase um, because somewhere that was specified, where is that? It returns a set with all lowercase words. So we're gonna make it lowercase. So next returns the string, we immediately convert it to a lowercase string, and then we add it to the set. Okay. Couple things to note about the add method and the set. Adding duplicates to a set is ignored. This is fantastic. We don't need to check if something's already in the set before we add the set. We can add the same word to the set a thousand times, doesn't generate an error, doesn't generate an exception, it's just ignored. That makes our code um, cleaner and more concise. Okay. On a related note, it's also ignored, uh, so is removing elements that don't exist. That's also nice. If we remove an element from a set and that element isn't in the set, it doesn't throw an exception or something, um, which is great. Uh, again, that makes our code cleaner and more concise. So very, very easy to work with sets. All right, let's uh, return words, return that reference to the set. Yes. Yeah, and, and yes, and maybe don't think of a set so much as like, you know, think of it as like just a bag that like every, t like things are just jumbled around in there. There is no place per se, it just throws it in there. Yeah. What really happens is all based on that hash code. All right, that should take care of, why do I have a warning here? Oh, I never closed the scanner. That's all right. Um, that should, we should be able to run this now. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna click on the run method. I don't think anything happened. Interesting. Anyone else able to run it? Yeah? It works fine for you? <laughs> Great, good, I'm glad you're all successful.
check your path if it says the file doesn't exist. You probably just need to do the return at the end. Yeah. So here, let me scroll down a little bit. So you do need to have the return at the end of the method. All right, well, my VS code is broken. But that's probably a me problem. Yeah. Oh, Yours not working? So you need to open the chapter 15 class notes folder as the top level folder. Does that make sense? All right, I'll worry about my problems later. Um, let's add a couple more things to uh, the project here. So if you look through those words, there's all sorts of weird words, right? So Lewis Carroll um, is known for creating his own words um, in his books and poems, and Jabberwocky is one of my favorite poems, um, and it's full of made-up words, but it sounds good. Did it work or not work? Yeah. No, he makes up the words. That's what's so cool. Like when you read like the Jabberwocky poem, like half the words are made up. So. You'll also see some other things in there that are just because it's like a Project Gutenberg open text and there's other things like that. All right, let's do two more things with this. Let's print the number of unique words in the novel. So that we just read and scanned in an entire novel. How many of the words in that novel are actually unique? Um, let's print that out. Unique words. Suggestions. What is an easy way to get, given what we already have, what's an easy way to get the number of unique words in the novel? What is another way we can phrase that based on our data structures? Tell me more. I like what you said there. All the words in the set are definitely unique. So given that fact, how can we get the number of unique words? What property of the set could we query? The size. Absolutely. So we'll say novel words dot size. So because every element in the set is unique, the size of the set is the number of unique words. That's pretty easy. That's cool. All right. I also want to show you how we can use an iterator with a set. So this is a little bit contrived, but let's say we're interested in the number of unique words greater than three letters. So print the number of unique words, and not spell, words with greater than three letters. 
To do this, we're going to use an iterator. It is going to be similar to when we used an iterator in a linked list, but slightly different. For example, the interface is not a list iterator. It is an iterator. Um, I believe list iterator implements the iterator interface, I think. So we're going to have an iterator of strings. I'm going to call it i as my iterator variable name. The way we get a new iterator is by calling the iterator method on the set. So slightly different interface, iterator instead of list iterator. Slightly different method, iterator instead of list iterator. But similar and consistent, at least. And our code is going to look very similar. We make a new iterator. We'll say while i dot has next. We're used to that. Now inside of our loop, um, we're going to need to get the next element in the set and have our condition. So if i dot next, that gets the next element in the set. If the length of that string is less than or equal to three, we don't care. Let's remove it. So here is a little method that will filter out from our set all the words that have uh, three or fewer characters. And then we can print it all out. System.out.println, unique, unique, we're, I'm really struggling with unique today. Unique words greater than three letters. And we'll just say novel words dot size because we've removed all the other ones. So now when you run the main method, not only should you see all of the unique words that are in through the looking glass compared to the dictionary, you, and you should see how many of those, how many unique words are there in a novel, which is a number I always find surprising. You think of a novel and you're like, there's a lot of words in the novel and there's a lot of pages, but there aren't as many unique words, at least as I expected. I was like, oh, okay. Um, and then we'll do our filtering and you'll see, okay, well, how many of those words are greater than, or, uh, greater than three letters long? So kind of interesting. Through this example, through this example, there's like just a couple things I wanted to make sure that you saw. One is, let me switch to that. These are the three methods that you need to be familiar with on the set interface. Um, you need to know the add method, which we used when we read from the novel and the dictionary and added it to the set. You need to know the contains method, uh, which returns true if the value is in the set. We use that um, to print out words that were in the novel, but not in the dictionary. And you need to be familiar with the remove method, which removes a value from a set. Now I did say it's fine to remove a value that's not in the set. It doesn't generate an error. It doesn't generate an exception. It does return false. Um, so if you need to remove it and you want to know if it was there or not, you can check the return value of the remove method. We didn't bother with that um, here. So we just called remove. So question. They're in the same order? Yeah. Oh, that's such a, that's a great question. All right, based on, um, what do we, yeah, let's, this is worth like thinking about. So.